Today is April 26th. The Bucks split a four-game series against the Brew Crew. There's good and bad, and we're getting production from unusual sources. Let's talk about it. It's Friday, guys. You're listening to the Bridge to Bucktober podcast. Yins guys, thank you for <laughs> thank you for listening to the Bridge to Bucktober podcast, where we talk all about them Pittsburgh Pirates. And that my name is Josh, and I'm joined as always by my brother Jake, who's wearing the shades and wasn't wearing the shades before the intro. That's why I laughed. What's up, Jake? What's going on, man? Hey, man. Um, overarching split a four game series kind of okay at home you'd like to win it when you win the first two yeah but here we are yeah I was actually I actually watched the first game of this series Monday from the 300 section at Truist Park <laughs> well that's right you guys went to the Braves game so we went to the Braves game and I just had it sitting on my lap and she's like, are you seriously watching a baseball game while you're at a baseball game? Yeah. I want to watch a good team. Good time. I'm, I'm yeah. just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It's good. Is it? I, I like going. I like. So, you know, you know how Ashley and I, we really like travel around, go to different ballparks and everything. Truist, five and a half hour drive for us at this point. It's closest big league park. It's, it's not a terrible trip, but it's definitely a two-day trip. Yeah. Yeah. And she's a big Braves fan. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? That that plays pretty heavily into that as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's Friday, man. Yeah. Friday is Hawaiian shirt day. But neither one of us are wearing Hawaiian shirts. No. I'm bummed out. So... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we ought to we ought to start doing some Hawaiian shirts on Friday every once in a while, I'm but usually a a we want to do that coming off the heels of a win. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I, I think like, hey, maybe without the win, we don't go Hawaiian shirt. You know what I mean? Yeah. But we've got some. I think I don't know if I took it back upstairs or if it's still down here. I think I took it back upstairs after the last time we did it. Um. So yeah, what we need to do that. Hmm. Just for some, I have some regular ones, some pirates ones. Okay, yeah. I mean, I only have the pirates. Some really, ones. really flower designs, man. I just have the free some, ones. I got some straight up Hawaiian shirts. Okay, okay. Pineapple is um, the whole deal. All right, so here's the deal: <laughs> you six straight losses, and then you come out of it. You win the first two games. You, you know, you got to feel okay about a split at that point when mm-hmm. you lost six straight. Coming out of that, you found a way to win a couple games. Um, Monday was the Chair Jones game. And Tuesday, the Bailey Falter game. We're going to talk about both those guys. You know, the, the six straight, run back to that real quick. Those are two teams that are just playing hot right now. They're not great teams. They're yeah. just, they were just, they, they were hot when well, they played us. Well, Boston wasn't. Well, but yeah. they played a good series. They played a really good series. And yeah. so there but they were definitely um so if you guys didn't listen to Monday's show, um Kyle Corwin from the 30 Take was on. He's a Boston Red Sox fan. Um their podcast is not Boston Red Sox, but basically he came on and said that what the Pirates looked like in that series was what the Red Sox looked like in the series before. And his thing was like something happened on the flight. You know what I mean? That they just kind of yeah, turned except it. Their, their starting pitching is in the is in the upper of all, the whole league. The, the, the top ERA for starting pitchers yeah. of anybody. Right. So mm-hmm. that's one thing. But like the rest of the team, yeah. you know what I mean, was really bad. So, but yeah, I mean, the, the errors and the mistakes that aren't errors, but you know, what, however they go, um, there was just a lot of them. Base running. Yeah. I felt like we... 
we we pushed too much to try to get extra bases, things like that. They were silly. Crews stealing, trying to steal third with exactly. two outs. Exactly. Like, yep. Why? Just things like that. So anyway, um, they seem to kind of just turn the page. This is baseball. Mm-hmm. You get up the next day and you say, I mean, they just looked like a different team on Monday. You start mm-hmm. off the game with a McCutcheon home run. And it just kind of changed. And I know it was just a 4-2 to two win and a, and a 2-1 to one win. So it's not like the offense broke open or anything. Right. But it was just enough. I mean, they played better, right? Error-free in the Jones game. Jones goes out with another 7-strikeout performance, another 20-plus whiff performance. Um, all the things that go along with his season – Sitting at a 279 right now. He got the win because of the run they were able to get. But, dude, let's go ahead and talk Jared Jones for a minute. Um, just another unreal performance. And this is what his fifth start? He has 98 strikeouts in five starts, right? Mm-hmm. No, 98. Is that it? He can't have 98 no, strikeouts. Not 98, 98, 98 whiffs. 98 whiffs. Uh, I'm trying to look here. You know what? I think I I think I did it. Probably on my... has like thirty something strikeouts. He does, yeah. Oh, ninety eight strikeouts. Okay, here we are. <laughs> ninety eight whiffs this season are the most by a pitcher in his first five career starts in the pitch tracking era, back to two uh, two thousand eight. So not like a super long, but I mean that's long enough. That's long enough, yeah. Um. The prior record was Masahiro Tanaka, who, by the way, I don't consider a true first five career. I mean, it's in the major leagues, but we're talking about a guy who's not a rookie. I mean, he was technically a rookie in the MLB, but he pitched professionally before him. You could you could talk a lot on that. Yeah, I could go a while on that. (laughs) Um, And I, you know, I've said that before. If you're coming over from another professional league, it's not the same. You're right. So, 84 to 98. And then, this is a tweet by Sarah Langs, by the way. And then she follows it up in all caps with, it's also the most in the first six starts, and he hasn't made his sixth start yet. (laughs) That's ridiculous. So, Tanaka had 96, yeah. Yep, (laughs) right? Let's do a little hat tip to Sarah Langs. Baseball's the best. Um, but like, so Tanaka had 96 through six starts and Jones already has 98. Um, what, ridiculous, man. what you're seeing from Jared Jones, Jake, and let's go ahead and talk about the hundo boys all together. What you're seeing here is a bar being set by Jones that I don't think Skeens will be able to match. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as good as he is, it's it, this has been crazy. Long term, I think Skeens is still the guy. But what Jared Jones has done to start off his career and to start off this <laughs> season, yeah, is crazy. Does he lead the National League? Is that where we're at right now in strikeouts? He's he's making a name for himself very quickly. I'm I'm checking that while you're saying your words. <laughs> I mean, no, uh, Wheeler, because Wheeler just had another start, and Glass now did too. I got to go to National League here. He's number three, but um, but Wheeler and Glass now made their six starts. And he's only five away from Glass now and seven away from Wheeler. So, I mean, he may tie Wheeler. Yeah. Uh, by the way, those guys have nine and 11 walks, and Jones has four. And he just walked two in his last start. Jeez. It's like it, you're getting to the point where you're like, is this real? Right, right. Whip. Uh, Ranger Suarez, which he's been electric, right? It's it's gonna be like he's actually making it a little difficult on Skeens. 
Well, I don't. Yeah, I mean, Skeens is still going to come up. He's still going to do his thing, right? I don't think he's right. going to make it difficult it's, necessarily. If I guess unless not, you not think difficult he, on Skeens, yeah, I guess yeah, it's yeah. going to be. It's difficult for us to like now. Our some of our expectations of Skeens are even higher than they were because mm-hmm. we're like, oh, if he's doing this, just think what Skeens is going to do when he yeah. gets here. Exactly. Like, he might not do this. <laughs> <laughs> he did finally give up a run. And it'll still be okay. You know what I mean? It'll be fine. Oh. He's going to be great. But it's he might not repeat what Jerry Jones did, and that's okay. <laughs> right. So you got... Because there's a couple ways to talk about this, right? Because I think we what we can do now is we can pivot to the bullpen game. Mm-hmm. Um, this was something that you brought up. Uh, you know... Well, there was one thing in particular, right? I mean, you're never you're never a fan of the opener. You to understand? me, there's a di- there's a difference between an opener and a bullpen game. Okay, I'm okay with a random bullpen game in, in certain situations that you're like, hey, because an opener, it's a first inning thing. To one me. or one or two, one maybe two. Yeah, and, and a bullpen game is like okay. You're going to go through the lineup once. You're going to go through the lineup once. You know, we're, we're it's it's for me it's different because when I when I see opener it's like you throw a relief pitcher and then you bring in your starter and he throws for four or five innings. Okay, so I, the way that I would and I still think it's an opener, but I guess it is more of like a a bullpen game. But I would like to see something where you say like, okay, Fleming or, you know, whoever, right? You're coming in and you're going to get the lineup once. And then I'm going to bring in Quinn Priester to go through the lineup twice. You know what I mean? And so like, it's that kind of a, uh, but I guess if you're saying you're doing two, you're doing two, you're doing two, you're doing two. And then there'll be a third inning mixed in there wherever we can do it. Then that's a full bullpen game, right? You're yeah. not going to ask any of those guys to do the lineup twice. So right. I could see your distinction there. And, and and I feel like that's what was going on. I, yeah, I, I mean, certainly. They weren't, I, I mean, I don't think they were going to stretch, you know, uh, Ortiz out much further. Right. So, but anyway, like in that situation, I still want my next quote unquote bulk pitcher to start with a clean inning. Okay. And when Fleming first off should have been out of the inning on the strike three, and because I think Davis throws the guy out, but that didn't happen. Uh, I'm not bringing in Ortiz right there. Back up and explain that a little bit because the what it was was it was ball four, but it was on the corner. It was called a ball, but it was a true strike. Um, mm-hmm. And so I get you. I, I follow you there, but let's just, I mean, this is, you know, a couple days. So when you say Davis throws the guy out, walk through that just a second. Sure. So three, two count. Uh, Fleming disengages a second time, right? He throws over to first. Now he's thrown over twice. If he throws over again, Bach, if he doesn't get him. So runner is obviously he's going to take off. And he did. He took off on the pitch. One out, right? One out. Davis catches the ball, throws the second. The ball beats the runner by eight feet. Like, I mean, it was clearly he would have been out. Is the Do you think Cruz, the runner's slowing down because it's a walk, too, though? He didn't, he, you know, it's probably. Okay, so there's a little but, bit there. But eight feet okay. is a lot. Like I got he, you. When, when the ball hit Cruz's glove, he wasn't in the screen yet. So essentially what you're saying is you think we get a we actually get Strike a caught out. stealing. Yeah, actually get one. Actually yeah. get one from a catcher. Um strike him out, throw him out, innings over. Even if he doesn't, the next guy's struck out, right? Well, they they took him out. Yeah. So it doesn't But even matter. if there's two outs, even if he strikes him out and you don't throw him out a second, you might give him another batter. You okay. Might. Yeah. Well, even yeah, cuz he didn't just walk a guy, right? Even if you don't you, you should have had somebody up in the pen who wasn't Luis Ortiz. Okay, so this is the big thing, and this is where you actually wanted to go with this. Um, Ortiz did give up a single on his first guy. Okay, and then the hit, and then the strikeout. So 
you're still in, in, a, in a pinch there. So anyway, um, so even if he is safe at second, they get the one run, but they're not getting the rest of them because right. there would have already been an out and, and, and not a guy on. Okay, so your your point that you're trying to drive in here is, is Ortiz coming into the game. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you're saying if they have two guys throw in there, Ortiz starts the fourth inning. Mm-hmm. And so you're bringing in pitcher X yeah. to get out of that inning, and then Ortiz gets his new inning. Yeah, I like that if you're telling me that Priester's the next guy, like a starter is the next guy. Um, but I can see with only one out, go into Ortiz there. If there's two outs, I do like give me a guy who just gets out of the inning and then I'll go to my guy that, that I plan on throwing two innings. But yeah, I mean, I, I see what you're saying. I, I I think I have less of a problem with it in this scenario. I think if it's a starter, I want I don't want him ever coming in unless it's the beginning of an inning. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, yeah. I there's there's part of me that says that that Rowanzi should always be a guy that starts an inning. He's not a guy I want to come get me out of a jam. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You just never really know what he's going to bring to the table. No, and really, I mean, I've liked Luis Ortiz until you know, I just think that with him and Contreras like this is a little bit of what you're going to get. It's like, oh, that was electric. Great, great job. Boy, that was really clutch. And then the next time it was like, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? So, yeah, I, no, I think it's a good point. Um, another question of this is why? Why are we going there? Why does Priester go on Friday? It was his turn. It was full rest. Priester should have been, or Priester could have been the guy, even if you were using Fleming, Bring in Priester in the third inning, fourth inning, and he goes three, four innings, right? Because obviously his first start wasn't great. So what is the point of pushing him back to Friday and now every pitcher after Keller is going to get that extra day rest? So you went with a bullpen game, and I'm, I guess I'm just trying to figure out like for what purpose. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling up the schedule now. We had three, so A's. We get into May. So basically we have thirteen straight days with a game. But these guys are on full rest, right? I mean, every five days, that's full rest still. Yeah. It's not like we're asking it's not like we have a four man rotation and we need to do that. <laughs> so we're we're pushing right. guys off. Now we're going to go, what, Priester, Perez, um, other starter. Help me out here. Yeah. Jones isn't there yet, right? No, Jones. Falter. Jones, Jones then Falter. So Jones, yeah. will, Jones will go the Sunday game in San Francisco. <laughs> Falter, and then it'll be Falter, Keller, and, and back to Priester? Like, where do you fall... You know what I'm saying? When you start yeah. May. So are we going to do another bullpen game on Wednesday instead of going Priester? I could see you maybe doing that. Day game, Wednesday, travel day, got Thursday off, Skeens comes and pitches against the Rockies. We're done. <laughs> In Colorado? No, no, no. At home. Okay. May 3rd, which was the day that MLB Pipeline said it's going to be May 3rd. If they go with Fleming, Ortiz, that kind of a joke in Oakland on Wednesday, it's a done deal. Here's my question, Jake. Why not, uh, why not if, if you're going to do this, if you're going to throw in bullpen games when you have a five-man rotation, we're still on the hundo boys, all this, why not bring Skeens up, run a six-man rotation? I mean, that's a good point. Like, run a six-man rotation. I, yeah. Don't do a bullpen game. Mm-hmm. We got six guys. You're getting, is that a way? And I know that there's there's a bunch of guys out there. I'm one of them. I don't want a six-man rotation, right? I'm going to tell you this right now. Who are you, Who? why? Who are you saying, man, I don't want him at the wait an extra day? Mitch Keller, like four runs every time he goes out there? Like, oh, I don't mind an extra I, day off for Mitch I Keller at this point. a six-man rotation. There are no starters out there right now 
that pitch for our team who were like, man, I don't want him to go every six days instead of every five. I'm okay with an extra day off for everyone in this rotation. Mm -hmm. If you're telling me that we're trying to protect guys like Jones and Skeens, and by all means, I'm on board. We have no idea how to handle this injury problem right now. We don't know. You're not going to tell guys they can't throw 100. You're not going to tell guys not to throw the sweeper because those things get out. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm telling you right now, you look at Mitch Keller pitching, and I don't know if this is a hot take or not. I don't know how many people are out there saying this, but he's going with this cutter. He's not going with the sweeper all that much. Do you think Mitch Keller's pitching saying, how do I stay healthy? <laughs> right? So he goes out yeah. there his first two times. He gives up five runs, four earned in both his first two starts. Cutter, 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 cutter curve, cutter, slider, cutter. He's He was barely throwing the sweeper. He wasn't throwing the four seam up there in 96, 97 that much. Is he doing it because he's trying not to go all in? And if that's the case... That's a good question. Because when he went there and his next two starts, he gave up two runs each, and he was more fastballs, more sweepers. The one thing I looked at, because it wasn't, it wasn't monumental, but the one thing I looked at was his first game when he had a good outing, and you were like, hey... Looks like Mitch Keller's going to be all right. I looked at the spin rate. Every pitch was up. The velo, every pitch was up. Now, you could say, well, of course it was. He pitched better. (laughs) But I wonder if it was intentional. Because if it was intentional that he was trying to spin less and less velo to try to stay healthy, which is something that you and I have actually said, well, why don't you just <laughs> stop? Yeah. Why You can still be effective, right? Mm-hmm. And just paint and, and, and pitch without that. And now maybe I'm looking at this saying, maybe some guys can't. And Keller well, might be. You're absolutely some guys can't. I mean, that's facts. Maybe, maybe Mitch Keller's one of them. I mean, I, don't, I, I hope not. I, you you have to have pinpoint command. Like you have to have command of everything you throw, and you have to have a good variance of speeds. But if you but if you were not throwing max effort every pitch, I feel like you should be able to improve your command by not doing mm-hmm. that. And so you should be able to do it. You're you're a professional pitcher. You got there for a reason. <laughs> anyway, so I guess what I'm saying here is. If what we're seeing from Mitch Keller is, hey, when I try to stay healthy, quote, unquote, like I said, we haven't figured this out. Right. But when I try to stay healthy, I give up four runs. And when I go out there and ball out and do the things that everybody right now is saying is going to hurt me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this is what's ridiculous is that we're talking about the injuries so much right now because we are. It's it's all across everywhere. It has to be. The stars are getting injured. The stars right. are, are leaving the game. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you just had you just had Blake Snell come off the uh you know, finally get signed, come in and he's like, Oh, here we go. I L already. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so like we're sitting here saying, What are we gonna do? And I don't know that his is elbow, I don't know that he's long term. I I'm not that's not what I'm saying. I'm just like, because this keeps happening, you can't help but have conversations about it and what it's doing is I'm watching a Pitching Ninja interview with Jared Jones, who I'm super excited about. And we know that by the fifth inning, he's not throwing 102 anymore. We know that. Yeah. And yet, he's he asks him about his slider. How do you hold your slider? And he's like, yeah, I hold it this way. I don't go fingers together. I go fingers apart. It does this thing. And he's like, are you... Are you trying to spin it more? Are you? He's like, I'm throwing it as hard as I possibly can. How do you hold your change up? I hold it like this. I'm not really good with this one finger, but basically I just I throw it as hard as I possibly can. And I'm sitting here going, this guy's toast. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> this the fear of me. The the yeah. fan, the fan fear is saying, This is fun, but he's we just you're always gonna be waiting for that. And you don't want to wish anything on anyone. Right. He obviously. could absolutely take that and be perfectly healthy. It, it, you know, it's not a, when we talk about all these injuries, the, the numbers are still, what? 
I don't know. It used to be 60% of pitchers of all injuries. 60% of them were pitchers. Now it's 75, something like that. But that doesn't mean that there's like, oh, 75% of all pitchers are injured. It's still less than half. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So like, yes, eventually this is a, this is a fear that they all have. But also when you look at this, you say, well, but do you want to sacrifice? Like tell a guy he can't go out there. If that's what Keller was doing and he was, and he's getting banged up. Maybe a six man is the way to go right now. I, I, I wouldn't hate it. I, especially, you know, we got enough. Like, it's not like our pitchers are doing horrible. So it's not like, yeah, but. We could do without this guy. Even if you, even if you could, like, even if you're saying, like, yeah, but why do we have to have a guy with this guy? Because if not, we'd be throwing a bullpen game. Like, let's say that ends up being Quinn Priester. But why do we even have to? Why don't we just go Skeens and run five? Because would you rather have Priester? Maybe even use an opener for Priester if it helps, right? But just saying, if it gives Jones an extra day. And we don't have to do the five innings, 59 pitches. Maybe we can, if if you have 59 in the fifth, maybe you can go a sixth. Yeah. Otherwise, if you're at 70 after five, let's get, let's move on. You know what I'm saying? Like you could treat it a little bit differently per yeah. start because you have an extra day off. And yeah. now why not bring skeins? You're basically pitching of- once a week. Yeah, one of at least one or two of those days, it's like zero throwing, zero, nothing. Because you do, you you have a throwing program. You do in between starts, like it's a recovery throwing pl- program. But you're you're throwing a baseball most of the time, mo- almost every day. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm not, I don't feel like um, maybe our times on a Friday show aren't going to go down that path. But like, right, you right, hear Smoltz and Clavin and those guys say we throw every day all the time. We never stop throwing. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know. Um, I, 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 I'm just saying. I think the pitch I, clock is different. I, a hundred percent. I think it's making it. Dumb. Guys used to work fast, but it was on their time. But they used to work mm-hmm. fast, and, it, and maybe the guys. What we're doing right now with max effort, it's all a combination. What we're doing with max effort, you need more time. The only way to say the pitch clock doesn't work is if you're not throwing max effort. So you got one guy saying it's the pitch clock. Well, no, it's the pitch clock. They're saying it's not the pitch clock, but what they should be saying is, well, it's the pitch clock because you're doing this. Right. It's a combination combination of everything. For sure. The pitch clock's been great. As much as I was like, this is stupid. It has been great. Uh, there are people who are saying I can watch a baseball game now. Um, I think that players got things out of hand. I actually think hitters were out of hand. The you know started no Mar Garcia Power doing the six hundred. Like your Velcro is going to be bad after the end of this game, and you know what I mean. It's just all these things that you have to fix and do, and and it felt like people were taking more breaths. And dude, a Red Sox Yankees game was painful to watch. It felt like it was a six hour game every single time. And it was always on. Always on. Anyway, I think it's been great. You know what I'm saying? To, I could have done a without the tweaks. Extent. I could have done without the tweaks. No but. reason to tweak it right now. I think if it was one pitch clock, whether there's guys on or not, I would have been fine with that too. But either way, here we are. It's like the fourth time I've said here we are tonight. So anyway, we don't really technically need to go there. But I wonder if Mitch Keller yeah. is maybe changing – some of his pitches for that reason. I just, I'm curious. Like I said, none of this stuff means that I think that anybody's definitely doing that and they're hurt. But right. I, I'm just questioning, would a six man do well? Um, And so let's go ahead. I mean, we, we don't have a lot more time. We do like to try to keep the Friday shows a little bit tighter. We want you guys to, to then go back and listen to Mondays. If you missed it, if you're a weekend listener, I don't want you to miss Monday's show. Um, there's always good conversation on Monday's show too, so go back and listen to that. Uh, but but I do want to bring up kind of one of the things here today is uh, it was actually going to be the main thing, but we we really I'm not going to fight a good conversation, right? <laughs> and I felt like <laughs> right. we were going somewhere with that. Right. I don't want to get rid of a good conversation, dude. We're getting production. Uh, you even brought it up right there uh, from Bailey Falter. You said none of our guys are really even. Do- How in the world? 
we went from what we saw in spring training to what we saw the first five batters of the season, and then all of a sudden. I think it was like if you just erase, which you can't do, but if you just erase those first five batters and say his season started after the Grand Slam, right? He's yeah. got like a 167 ERA. It's crazy. Yeah, I, I, and, and no one really knows exactly where it came from. It's a funky fastball. This is exactly what everybody, this is what the Pirates, This maybe this is a lesson to us. This is what the Pirates have liked in Bailey Falter this whole time. This is what they've seen. I mean, the Phillies liked it in him too. The long extension, right? The fact that he get he's very long with his with his extension. He's the fastball feels way harder than it is. And we were just like, yeah, but it doesn't, obviously, because we don't see it. (laughs) And all of a sudden, you're seeing exactly what they were talking about. Mm -hmm. That fastball up in the zone. Looks like he's blowing it by, guys. It looks like Jared Jones' fastball up in the zone. <laughs> Although Jared Jones can get away with throwing it right down the middle and they can't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's... I, I I mean, the first couple times I was like, I don't get it. I mean, I was at the first game when he went six... You almost didn't go. Almost didn't go because Falter was pitching. <laughs> and... Katie, who now is just, I mean, she's letting me have it. And rightfully yeah. so, she should. Because, you know, she's always, she's she's nice. She's like, his mother loves him. We're going to go to the game, and he's going to do great. And then she then she pushes <laughs> hard, right? Then she pushes hard. And she says, Bailey Falter is going to throw a no-hitter. And you're going to be so pumped that you were there for this. And then all of a sudden, after the first thing, that's why, if, if anybody follows me on Twitter, that's why it follows the podcast, which is really, like, I just... I don't ha- I don't use my own Twitter anymore, so mm. you're getting me. Uh, but I remember the first inning saying, "Oh my gosh, Bailey Falter has a no hitter after one." I tweeted that, thinking <laughs> that it was going to be really funny. And then every inning after that, I kept tweeting it. And then I realized in the fourth inning, like, "Okay, <laughs> what are we doing?" <laughs> and then it was the fifth, and I'm like, um, "Bailey Falter has a no hitter after five? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and she's over there, being like, "I told you." <laughs> <laughs> and then when they finally got the blue pit, she's like, that shouldn't have been a hit. He should still have a no hitter. And then they, they were going to take him out either way because of his pitch count. Yeah. And she was like, I told you he was going to do that. And I was like, you didn't know. But <laughs> the other day she said Bailey Falter's her, fa- her favorite pitcher on the team. And I'm like, you can't say that when Jared Jones is doing what he's doing. Right. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, he's been great. And that's. I think this might be the first time that we'll, we'll go ahead and feel okay saying it out loud. If he gets blown up his next time out, don't blame us. Uh, because to me, I'm like, yeah, that was inevitable. But like at this moment, maybe it's not. Maybe he's figured it out. Yeah. But I guess what I guess the lesson is about Bailey Falter in particular, and then we'll go on to the other two guys and then get out of here. Um. When a team says like that they like somebody and that they're giving him a shot because they see something and they're doing something, right? And we say, we don't know why they like this guy. We don't know why they're doing this. You know, um, I think, uh, gosh, I wish I remember who said these exact words today. I like the credit where I read something, you know what I mean? But it's a thought that, that, you know, that we have often, right? And it's, you know, fans are going to look at results all the time. Everything's going to be results. I mean, you're going to talk about guys like Cruz and Davis and the whole thing right now. We've got guys scuffling. And we're going to look at results. MLB teams don't do that. They look at the process. Mm -hmm. They know, and I've said this a million times since we started this podcast, they know what's going on in the bullpens or in the hitting cage and in, they know what's going on in the background. Now, whether that means they know why he's struggling or they're saying he's so close because we see the work he puts in and we know what's about to happen. We're just kind of trying to make it happen. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. This is the Bailey Falter thing, man. They 
they've apparently liked it. I, I couldn't believe he made the team out of spring. I thought this guy was long <laughs> gone. Yeah, we both did. Yeah. And here they were, and then the first five hitters, I'm like, what are we, why, what, this is, all those thoughts. The stops were intentional. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is like, they just trusted it. They saw what they liked. And you and I, when we were in Sarasota that day, and we're watching him in the bullpen, and we're like, man, I just, I don't see it. Even in the bullpen, we were saying that. And then he goes into the game, he gets rocked. But the one thing we saw is that he came back to the bullpen after that. Yeah. And like, I'll give you this. When we, I mean, because we kind of said a little bit, right? And he made that comment to you. We, you yeah. ask him about the jerseys. He has like, how's them jerseys feel? As long as I get one, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. And we were like, okay. I mean, like, I respect the attitude. We understood mm -hmm. that the guy knew. Yeah. That it wasn't right. And I think that moment, you and I even talked about this. We were like, he knows it's not right. He's not pretending that he's good right. and that this is as good as it gets. So there was a little bit of like self awareness there. But we noticed too, and we talked, uh, I think we were talking to the, maybe the North Shore Nine guys at the time. And I think maybe Jim said he came back to the bullpen and he continued to work after his outing that wasn't yeah. good. And so there was a little bit of a, and we didn't give him credit for that necessarily in the moment, right? Yeah. We were like, okay, so he's working hard. I'll give him that. He still stinks is maybe what we would have said. But now looking back, you're thinking the guy never stopped. Like he understood that something wasn't right. And I think there's a process thing to, that we can learn from that. You know what I mean? And I think that yeah. that's the case with a lot of these guys. I think that's the case. Dude, O'Neill Cruz is an easy one to me. He missed an entire season last year. The game's really fast. When you get tired, he was fine in the spring. It looked like his everything was there. The ability's still there. It sped up on him, and he has trouble. I think still, I think you're starting to see it, though. This is maybe the process. He's had trouble slowing the game down. Mm -hmm. I think he's the, some of the decisions he's been making are, I I think maybe one of those things where you're 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 kind of like, I can't keep headlight. up. You know what I mean? I can't keep up yeah, with this. And, and, and he even came out and said it, didn't he? He said he was kind of lost at the plate. He said he was losing and confidence. Losing confidence. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's tough, man. It, it seems like he's turning a corner though. Yeah, some better at bats. Those are the kind of things you like to mm -hmm. see when you get to slow the game down. Um, well, so he's had a couple two multi hit games, right? Yeah, in the Brewers um, series, it, maybe. Yeah, you know he had a three hit game, and then it, yeah, I think he did have two hits. Either way, um, mm -hmm. we want to talk about two more guys here. Alika Williams, um, we haven't been given quite the love. Part time player, you like to see part time players playing part time and doing well when they do. Um, you have to be careful, and and I'll we're gonna skip by Connor Joe here for a minute, um, but we're gonna say that like Connor Joe is a part time player who was playing well, and just like last year, you put him in the lineup every day, he's gonna stop playing well. That's the way it goes with part time players who are good. Connor Joe mm -hmm. is one of those guys. If you continue to play him part time, he's gonna continue to be good. If you Play him every day. You're going to see Connor Joe from the Mets series, which was terrible. If, if I remember that right, Mets series was when it was he played. It was like he he had played a ring of days in a row, and it's like eventually he gets exposed and he's not good anymore. Yeah. So I know there's a lot of people pining saying play Connor Joe in front of Telez. If you're saying that, what you're saying is we want the same offense that Telez is giving us right now, but we'd like him on defense better. Telez has been fine on defense, I think. Um, I think Connor Joe does bring some things to the table at first base that, you know what I mean, that are that are really good. Uh, but for that matter, Connor Joe's been playing right field more often anyway. So you're basically saying you want him to play over top of those guys. Um, so I, I say all that to say, let's maybe pump the brakes. I'd, I, I'd much rather see Connor Joe coming in and into a game. He's a really good pinch hitter. That's actually a really hard thing to do. Come in cold. I, I I am a guy who mostly wants to stay with the guy who's been in the game. 
because of the fact that, like, dude, even if you're 0 for 3, and we talked about this with Telez earlier this season, his, his lone home run of the game, he was 0 for 3 with three strikeouts, but he was seeing the ball all game. Sometimes that's better than a pinch hitter coming in cold. But Connor Joe doesn't believe that. He comes in against a lefty in the game for Telez, comes in cold. That guy comes in, swings at the first pitch, and gets a hit. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, I'm all about Connor Joe doing what he's what he does well, and that's coming in later in the game against a lefty or just in general getting starts occasionally. If he's super yeah. hot, give him a couple in a row. Give him two or three. And then let's – Maybe go to the next series. Let's let's get somebody else in there. Whether it's right field or first base, I don't care. It's mostly been right field, um, but there's been a lot of firsts in there too. Tough lefty, put him in, keep him in there then, but don't let him go too long without play. Anyway, you get the same thing out of Alika right now. Let's not get carried away. Let's not put Alika in for a week. I like this Alika. I like this guy going to be hitting around 300. He's got some extra base hits. He's been scrappy. He's he's confident at the plate. Let's keep that up, right? We don't want to see him play every day instead of Triolo or instead of right. Hayes or instead of Cruz, especially Cruz. Cruz needs to play. He needs to get going. We need yeah. that guy. This team will not win 80 games. Whatever your goal is, that's right in between me and you. That's why I went with the number 80. Mm -hmm. No other reason. But th this team doesn't <laughs> win 80 games without O'Neill Cruz being O'Neill Cruz. It won't right. happen. They will not do it. Now, maybe some people think that. I don't think so. I don't think they threaten 500 without that guy in the lineup hitting home runs. So he needs to play. Yeah. Henry Davis may be another story. We could talk about that another day. We did talk catching like two weeks in a row. But there's a case to be made that Henry Davis could. I don't think he has anything to prove at AAA. I think the guy just needs to get hot. Yeah. We can't afford the cold right now. Which brings me to our last guy that we want to talk about. Joey Bart is not what we're seeing. <laughs> right. But I'm 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 willing to ride this thing. Yeah, why not? Uh, he's not my catcher three years from now. I don't believe that that's going to happen. But for the next three days, I'll be happy with it. <laughs> <laughs> because he's hot. I don't understand yeah. this. We've never seen a run like this from him, right? Not that I know of. I mean, he's only had one season where he's even been semi-productive. Yeah. So that, that was it. Man, sometimes the change of scenery is a big deal. He's just a, a big, big deal. And, and you just never know. He's a former up top pick right yeah he's a first round pick so was all these other guys we've had over the years that never worked out anthony alford was right. too right you know i mean you can go talk about those guys who were you know it, it doesn't always work but out you, you, there is you, a chance right right it's just it's just one of the things like it, it could it still could click there's this top first round draft picks it's not always going to click but but there's always the chance that it does yeah, and it, <laughs> sometimes a change of scenery helps it click. Sometimes it makes no difference. Yeah, I, I just Not saying I, it's clicked. I, you haven't really seen enough to say it's clicked. You know, not long term. It's a it's hot streak. clicking. It's a hot streak. Sure. If it's this a is hot streak. ride hot streaks, I'm all about it, man. Yeah. I'm all about the people of the game ride hot streaks. When it starts yeah. to cool off. Now, if you see it happen, if he plays two days in a row and it cools off, then he might fall into that category of the Leica Williams. Like, hey, let's just maybe he does stay good long term if he's not the everyday guy. Yeah. In that case, I mean, Grandall's hit a homer or two down in AAA. Fill in the rest of that story. If you have, you know what I mean? If you want to see those two guys go for a little bit, and, and and maybe you have a little time to say, hey, Davis, we know you can hit. Go down there and hit a while. Yeah. When you get heat, when you get hot again, and you're not frustrated, and you, catching's been all right. Mm-hmm. I hate to see that guy change positions again, but holy moly, we still don't have a first baseman for 2025. Like, 
Telez right. is here and gone, and I'm not sure he's even going to work anyway. <laughs> That's yet to be seen. But right. even if he does, he's not going to come back here. And then this is a one-year deal, right? Right. And so we still don't have a guy. I, I just don't know why you don't consider... I don't care about the arm anymore. He hasn't thrown out a base stealer. He doesn't catch the ball on a ground ball to right field when he plays right field, so he's not going to be able to throw it a guy out anyway. And Reynolds is doing just fine with that. But I don't, but that, I guess what I'm saying, I'm just talking about no, Davis know, though, right? I know. So the thing is, is like, I don't care about his arm. I, I right. just don't, right? We right. know that we, 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 we know, we've heard, we've seen O'Neill Cruz, his arm doesn't work in the outfield. He's got that sidearm thing. It's the whole thing. He's probably never going to be a right fielder. You've heard people say, well, then move him to first. He apparently can use the glove, but he can't use the arm. So who cares if he can throw it 100 miles an hour, put him at first. Why is that any different for Henry Davis? You've seen catchers who have had success at first base. I was just having a conversation with with our friend Brock today, and I'm like, I mean, we we looked at Mike. And a lot of these guys are to save knees or because of the knees, but like we we've seen Mike Piazza be a f- good first baseman. You've seen I'm, I'm gonna have to pull up the the, the text because we, him and I both um, kind of had a list of guys that we were thinking about, and he, you know, whether or not he was thinking the same thing as me, but like Mike Napoli, Carlos Santana, Joe Maurer, Victor Martinez, Salvador Perez, Buster Posey, even Yachty had 50 or so games out there. But Piazza, I mentioned, and these are guys who were catchers who could handle first base. And it didn't seem like it was a terrible transition for them to do that. But like, and there's other guys, right? There's other guys who I'm sure that anybody listening to this is like, well, what about that? You know what I mean? And you're thinking of somebody in your head right now. Um, Why couldn't Henry Davis be that athletic Paul Goldschmidt, even you know, just thinking of those guys who are athletic first basemen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Who aren't just uh, Prince Fielder. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be that way. Or Rowdy Deleuze. <laughs> <laughs> right. It doesn't have to be that way. I mean, Connor Joe, when he's out there, is not your prototypical. But, like, if Henry could just hit, you'd have that talk. I don't yeah. care about the arm right now. If he's not a great catcher... If you if he's got a great bat, catchers only play 120 games max. Yeah. If he plays first, he could play 150. If he's gonna hit first things first, he's got to hit. Yeah. Maybe when you send him down to get his bat going, you say, "Well, we're only gonna get your bat going if you play every day. Go out there, we'll deal with it in AAA." And I'd hate to do that again because the whole reason he wasn't hitting is because he can't field. And if if the catching position is keeping him from hitting because he's got to worry about all the stuff back there that he's still rough, but doing fine. But is he doing fine because of how much work he's putting in? Because if so, I'd rather him hit. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Maybe that's... I've always, a- thought, I've always thought corner infield spots were spots that, mo- that most catchers could convert to. Yeah, and there's a lot less. I mean, first base is not an easy position. I'm not saying that. Like, I'm not just saying, oh, I just throw him out there. Who cares? I mean, obviously you care. You don't. Yeah. But if he could be, if he could be better than Josh Bell defensively, it'll work. Yeah. You know what I mean? And really, Josh Bell is working for the most part. He plays a mm-hmm. lot of first. He's he's. I I don't love it, but you know what I mean. Yeah. You get, you get the point. I I, I think he's. We don't have an option at first base, so maybe we could get that. But but listen, Bart, Falter, Alika, they're working right now. They're playing well. We need those everyday guys to play well. And you have a good team. I'm not willing to give up on Davis yet. Cruz just needs to catch up to the speed. He missed the whole year. You're gonna. It's going to take some time. It's still April. And I know these games count. 100% know these games count. Let's not forget that I, my prediction for the season was what, 78? Yeah. Like I'm, right now, if things stay the same, they're a 500 team, that's more than 78. So understand that when I say people are fine, I expect this team to be around 500. So 
yes, I know games count in April, but there are long-term things that we need to fix. And a guy like Cruz, like, maybe it takes him May to get going. And it looks like that might happen by May. Maybe he falls off a little bit late in the season because he missed a whole season. Like a lot of guys did after 2020 and then the lockout and that you've had shortened seasons. And then maybe these injuries have a lot to do with that. That usually, like you can't ask a guy to go 200 innings after he only played 60 games. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got 11 starts the year before because not because of anything other than like COVID. You know what I mean? Right. So, I mean, there's just a lot of things. I mean, for a guy who missed all but nine games, there there's going to be some some uh, physical things that are going to go along with that. You know what I mean? Not yeah. to mention, you know, his rehab and his leg and, you know what I mean, whatever else. So, I don't know. Interesting, though. We had some... Uh, we, we went long. We ended up going long, so whatever. But we're getting some... Uh, some production from places we didn't expect. Now we need to get it from the places we expect. Yeah. Right? I'm looking at Cruz. I mean, Hayes doesn't have a homer yet, does he? No, I don't Mm. think so. I'm looking at Cruz. I'm looking at Hayes. I'm looking at Davis. Particularly. In particular. We've seen a little bit of, I mean, Brian Reynolds is doing all right right now. I don't think this is his peak, but he's doing all right right now. Kutch had the two homers this week. Now that he's past the 300, are we going to see maybe a little more of what we'll see from Kutch, right? I don't think it's going to be all-star Kutch, but I think the leadership plus a pretty good hitter. A um, couple moments on, in Thursday's game. Kutch just seemed to get up when we needed him. Just need him to come through in those moments mm-hmm. a little more often. You know what I mean? I, I obviously can't do it every time. Right. But when you yeah. get three chances in a game, man, I just give me one of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't get three yeah. chances in a game very often. If we could have got one of those chances to work out. Um Sawinski, you're starting to see a little bit. He's had some clutch hits. That game that clutch hit, uh the, the Homer today, the the double um or Homer the double, maybe that was was it was the a double today. today yeah. Yep. The double was today, which would have been a homer in 20 other ballparks. Um, you know, I mean, he's had some some moments there. He's hit some balls hard. He's starting to show it. He's been pretty good against lefties. He's been, and he's been pretty good in the outfield this year. He's going, <laughs> he's going after the ball. He's definitely – he's never by a lack of effort, which last year – you kind of thought that one of his problems was that he just pulled up because he didn't have the confidence to go get it. Mm-hmm. Um, he's slamming into walls. He's diving for a ball today. I think a lot of guys, uh, the the catch probability on that play is about sixty five percent. So maybe, maybe we do get to that ball if you're a different left fielder. It's not because of a lack of speed, I don't think, but maybe those jumps still aren't great from from Jack. Um, even the the Reynolds play where he dives in the outfield, I think that had like a ninety percent catch probability. Like where where was Reynolds at there? Once you get there and you're diving, that's not a like that's not an easy play for neither one of those right. guys. But maybe we could have gotten there differently. I don't know. You know the the numbers are there. I don't know what all goes into that necessarily. Would does it matter where their positioning is? Maybe they were out of position. Um, but either way. Uh, they're tough catches once they're there. Uh, he made a he made a nice catch today too, mm-hmm. going back on the ball. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, we'll, we'll see. But those kind of guys um, getting some production out of them, or uh, you know, specifically we're talking Cruz, Hayes. Yeah, I would even say Telez. I don't know if I believe in Telez yet or not. I have no idea. Did I think that maybe there was a chance? Yeah, I saw some things early in the season that I thought he might actually work out. He had 30 homers a season, and then he had an injury-riddled season where he stunk. There's reason to believe he could bounce back. Right. But I, that doesn't mean I necessarily – but he still only did it one year, so I, I'm rambling now, Jake. We need to get out of here. 
<laughs> Anything else that we that we didn't get to that you wanted to just have like a thought at the end here that I don't talk about because I'm I'm rambling too much right now. Is there anything you wanted to say? Yeah, I want to say this. I I, I don't think so. I think, think we've we got covered it all? everything that I yeah. All right, um, San Francisco. I don't know who we're facing. I'm not going to take the time to do it. Um, this was a long one on a Friday. It's not longer than any normal one, but um, good conversation today. I, I'm glad we mm-hmm. got to do this. Um, anyway, so good talk. Good I'll, talk. I'll play some music here. Friday yeah. is Hawaiian shirt day. So, you know, if you want to go ahead and, uh, wear a Hawaiian shirt and jeans. Enjoy your weekend guys. Hopefully we get some wins out in San Francisco, uh, Bay area, a couple series. We'll talk about the, uh, what the A's are doing next, uh, on Sunday or whatever. Let's go, Bucks. Let's go, Bucks. Thanks for listening to my dad and Uncle Jake on the Bridge to Bucktober podcast. Follow them on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Bridge the Number Two Bucktober. Don't forget to subscribe so you know when new episodes are released. Clear the deck, cannonball coming, and let's go, Bucks.